Russia's Prime Minister Vladimir Putin is about to take to the skies again, heading this time to Beijing. What's he up to next week? Welcome to Stratfor, I'm Colin Chapman. Putin leaves behind a Russia struggling to recover from recession. The economy contracted more than 10% in the first half of this year. As is often been the case in Russia, perception has tended to overshoot, I think, on the downside. And what we're actually seeing at the moment is um, some real signs of recovery, uh, not just in the stock market, but more recently also in the economy. Putin's goal in Beijing will be to give the economy another boost. He'll supervise the signing of over $5.5 billion worth of deals and will also point to the availability of Russian resources like natural gas from the huge deposits in the Arctic peninsula of Yamai. Well, economic ties is certainly a major issue between China and Russia and always has been. It's complicated by distance, by infrastructure and other issues. Uh, at this moment, in this meeting, one of the critical questions is going to be not economic ties, but the political situation, particularly concerning Iran. Russian trade with China grew sixfold in just six years to $56 billion last year. We also have to remember infrastructure. In order to have substantial trade, you need to have the rail lines, the roads, uh, proximity. And the fact is that the location of most of Russian natural resources and the location of Chinese industry makes it somewhat difficult uh, for them to get involved. But already uh, they have a substantial trade uh, and it's a growing one, but it's not critical to either nation. China's Premier Wen Jiaobo, basking in the glow of the successful 60th anniversary of celebrations of the People's Republic, may well share Putin's views. Could that extend to sanction breaking against Iran? Certainly the Iran issue is likely to be discussed, but it's going to be discussed in the context of discussing the United States. Both Russia and China are increasingly concerned about the aggressiveness of the United States. That is, the Chinese on trade issues, the Russians on insisting on expanding influence in Ukraine and Georgia. So both have issues that they need to discuss. And in that sense, I'd say they're not going to be discussing Iran. They're going to be discussing the United States. Now, here's Marla Dial with the rest of what's ahead. We'll be following the outcome of the trilateral summit between China, Japan, and South Korea, which will help to shape the course of Pan-Asian relations. We'll also be discussing the aftermath of Hillary Clinton's travels to Switzerland, Britain, Ireland, and Russia. During her two days in Moscow, She'll be meeting with Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and President Dmitry Medvedev. Prime Minister Vladimir Putin will be at the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Conference in China. And, of course, there are lots of energy deals he's likely to sign with China's government while he's in Beijing. Other stories we'll be following include the possibility of normalized ties between historical enemies Turkey and Armenia. The Armenians also have been trying to settle their decades-old dispute with Azerbaijan over the Nagorno-Karabakh enclave, but talks on that issue collapsed on Friday. Although the Armenians say they never linked the two issues, many saw an agreement with Azerbaijan as a precursor to a fresh start with Turkey. We'll be examining why the talks fell through and what that means for wider issues affecting Turkey, the United States, and Russia. Meanwhile, the fate of the Lisbon Treaty is now coming down to the wire. Only two countries, Poland and the Czech Republic, are still holding out on the measure, which would streamline decision-making for the 27-member European Union. The signature of the Polish president is expected soon, but it's not clear yet which way the Czech Republic's Eurosceptic president will lean. 